Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to My Classic Car. Well, this week we're in Big Fork, Montana, at the north end of Flathead Lake for the Rumble in the Bay Car Show. Man, I love coming out here, and this is such a beautiful place. Big Fork's such a cool little town, too. Big Fork, get it? Arr, 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 arr. And today, it's full of some of the greatest cars and trucks you'll see anywhere. This is gonna be a blast. Let's do this thing. <laughs> the SO Tiger, put a tiger in your tank. This truck sparkles. We got a louvered license plate back there. Jesse, how you doing, man? Really good to see you here, Dennis. You know, it's a great day to be in Big Fork, Montana. Every day is a great Every day. Every day is a great day. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great town, great show, mm -hmm. and just a great part of the country. Yes, it is, very much so. Well, you're on the north end of, of Flathead Lake. Mm -hmm. This whole area is a destination to begin with. Yes, it you is. You know, so I mean, it's like, whether there's a great car show, like today mm -hmm. or not. This is just a great place to come and hang out. Oh, exactly. We revel in it. We really yeah. do. There's just so much going on here. You had the poker run around mm -hmm. Flathead Lake, which was unbelievable. Beautiful place. I mean, it's, it's, it's great. We had a chance to get out in a boat and, you know, kind of kind of look around and, and got a chance to go up in a plane. Well, and I'm it, envious of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was great, man. Yeah. 1966, Cessna Skyline. The only way to fly. We kind of saw Flathead Lake and Big Fork from all angles, and it is spectacular out it's here. It's a jewel of Northwest Montana. Oh, There's man. no ifs, ands, or buts. You draw cars from all over, yeah? Yes, uh, a lot from Canada. Idaho and a lot of Eastern Montana. A lot of good restorations, too. That's a nice truck. I mean, that's a nice truck. And, you know, this is a small little town. It is like three, four blocks long or so. Right. But you've got them packed in here. How many cars do you think you have? Today, probably in the area of about a little under 350. I mean, that's a lot. That's, it's a record for us. Wow. It really is. Yeah, man. No so problem. people seem to come to this show year after year. Is yes. this kind of a one people put on the calendar? Yeah, it's a showpiece. We're listed as the third largest show in Montana today, probably the second. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is amazing, and, and the community is behind it. And I've seen some great cars. Yeah. What do you say we get around and check a few them out? Sure. Right, let's, let's do, do it, it, man. Is this Big Fork's finest? You bet. Yeah. So. This is amazing. I love this thing. I've never seen one. Margarita maker. Margarita maker. Well, Wayne, this is this is a personal fave. <laughs> 64 Fairlane 500 Sport Coupe, is that right? That's correct. I love the lines on this body. I just think it's such a great looking car. Tip to tail, it's just a wonderful looking machine. How long you had this thing? I've had this car about five years and just finished the restoration this uh, May. You really built this thing. because. I mean, this has got a kind of a Thunderbolt feel to it, doesn't it? It does, but it's not a Thunderbolt clone. It's my own take on what Ford would have done with a small block if they had it available to them back then. I always think of Thunderbolts uh, being white, but they actually, the first ones were in fact this color, weren't they? That's correct. The first 11 were vintage burgundy. Man, she looks great. The T-bolts would have had glass hoods. Correct. Is this a fiberglass hood or is just a... Just the bubble. Uh-huh. This would have been the, uh, the interior for 64 in the Sport Coupe? Correct. What made it a sports coupe with the bucket seats and the uh, center console, as well as a little more ornamentation on the uh, door panels. Is that aluminum there in the center console? Is that? That's all steel with oh, a really? uh, kind of a vinyl overlay on oh, it. Oh, no kidding. Did they come with her shifters? No, no. they didn't. This but is again, most, your take. Well, in most drag racers in that day converted them to a Hershey. Swapped them out the first anyway. Factory was yeah, kind of yeah, it was pretty sloppy. And the gauges look great too. You must have redone those. Well, the gauges in the dash, yes, and then the other gauges are all vintage Stuart Warner. Oh man, <laughs> you really did this baby up right. Love the roof line. It got almost some Thunderbird feel to it. The crisp line. Oh yeah. And the, the back end is is beautiful. I just the tail lights and everything. I saw one of these going down the road miles away a few years ago, and I was. I couldn't figure out what it was, and I chased it down finally because I thought it looked so good. <laughs> was that gold anodized uh, Fairlane Sport Yes, Coupe? it was. Man, you've put a pretty interesting engine in this. Let's go have a look at that, baby. Sure. Wow, okay, wow. <laughs> That's no 289 there. And you, Not it, anymore. It says 427, but that looks like a mighty small block. What, what are we looking at? You're looking at a 427 cubic inch Windsor small block. Starting with the 351 Windsor? Correct. You can punch it out that far? Yes, sir. If you stroke it long enough and you bore it big enough, you'll get 427 cubic inches. Wow, you know, it fits great in there. Kind of. We had to do a little, <laughs> had to do a little modification oh, here. Oh, you did kind here. of trim those, yeah, didn't you? And dual quad? There. Yes, sir. So what does this pump out? I haven't had it on the dyno yet, but it ought to be somewhere around 500, 500. Whew. Holy cow. This is awesome. A 64 Fairlane Sport Coupe sporting a 427 small block. 
That's it. Man, that's a car. I like that. Thanks Thank for bringing you, it out. My pleasure. <laughs>Oh, man, Don, this is a beautiful car. Thank you. <laughs> Thank a, you. We're looking at what? A 59 Plymouth Belvedere, right? Right. Two door hardtop. These are right. pretty rare. Very rare. Where did you find this thing? Just north of Knoxville, Tennessee. Wow. Was it, was it already restored? Or? It was an original. I didn't do much work on it. You're kidding. No. Because, I mean, this looks like a, an incredible restoration, yeah. actually. It's, How about the chrome? Did you have to re. The chrome is it was re chromed. The yeah, front yeah. bumper was, and I did the back. And yeah. it had the toilet seat? Yes, uh, it did. Yes. That was, yes. That was stock? That was not stock, but I think it was an option. Oh, for it was an option eight, for this. 18 oh, okay. bucks. Oh, wow. Eight, uh, 18 dollars. And these were yeah. the taillights and the bumperettes were part of the package? Yes. And these yes. fins. This may be yeah. the tallest fin that uh, Chrysler ever did. It's close anyway. I think, I think it is, yes. Man, I love how the roof comes down and the fins take off. That I think it's the rear quarter of this car that yeah. just really and sets it off. The roof lines make wow. these cars. And I love the interior, the 60-40 yeah. split bench. Thank you. Did you find original fabric for it? Or? No, that's original interior. It's original? This it's is original, the original? original interior from 1950. Even the driver's Even seat? the driver's That's seat. amazing. Yes. Your control's kind of at a V there at the instrument cluster, yeah. the dash, yeah. push button trans. Push button trans. And these eyebrows, this dual eyebrow yeah. here and the, and the chrome trim, that's a complicated grill too. Yes. And that was original? That's original. You didn't have to restore it? No. Or? Man, was no. this thing cared for. Yeah. So it's a 318 in it? 318 poly. Can we look at it? Yes. It's an original engine. The one that came with the car. The one that came with the car. We authenticated it. So this is a paper air cleaner by yes. now, right? But they, you know, it's funny because they kept a little bit of an oil bath look to the to yeah. the air cleaner itself. Yeah. It's got kind of a bulky, beefy look. Yeah. And you dressed up your chrome valve covers. Yeah. Were, they, were they silver blocks? Were they painted silver? They were silver. Really? Yes, that was oh. the proper silver, yeah. Was there any insulation under these originally or not? Um, were they just Some of them did, I think. And uh, this is the way this one came. You probably get looks everywhere you go with this, right? Oh yeah. oh, yeah, we always do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, 59 Plymouth Belvedere. Belvedere, right. Two-door hardtop. Two-door hardtop. What a beautiful car. Thanks for bringing it down, Don. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Man, she's nice. Well, Bob, this this 52 Nash, is, it, I love it. What's the model? It's an Airflight. An Airflight. Love the wagon. But this is not the only car you got here. You have this crazy twin coach <laughs> Helms Bakery delivery truck. I've only seen one other of those. They're so wild. Those look like street cars. And then behind me here, you've got this uh, Nova Spirit of America. I've never even heard of those. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have some interesting cars. Thank you. But let's focus on this because it's green. Uh, <laughs> and I love green cars. This is a 52 wagon. Were these like aftermarket period options or was that a factory thing? That was an aftermarket kind of thing you would get through a Warchowski catalog. Exactly. Yes. J.C. Whitney. Yes. Which, yeah, exactly. Nash is... Well, they're happy looking cars, you know, because they're round, they're sort of smiley looking. And one of the things I always get a kick out of when I'm following a Nash, you, you see how far in the rear wheels are set. The body just kind of bulges out over it. But she looks like she's done just completely original. Is that like the original fabric in here? Yes, everything? that is. I've seen old photographs and it's just as original as it gets. Oh, and, and a green headliner. And, you know, really pretty fancy uh, door panels because you had the seat upholstery there under the armrest. And, you know, there's three different fabrics. The one gauge cluster I always get yes. a kick out of. That. <laughs> but what's the, that's the radio I'm assuming there in the dash, center yes. of the dash. Uh, are those buttons, is that the, 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 the selectors for the radio? Or? Actually, the in-between is actually just the grill to the speaker. Oh, you're kidding. So the sound comes out through that? Right. Or, or what sound there is comes yes. out through <laughs> Oh, so this is a stock dash too, right? Correct. Boy, there wasn't much going on there, was there? No. <laughs> <laughs> and then coming back here, you got the picnic outfit. Was, was that actually an original green Dr. Pepper cooler? Yes, that just by chance was very, very close color. I can't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> and the picnic basket with the green plates and everything. Oh, this is just too cute. <laughs> so powering this would probably be some flathead six, right? Yes. Let's go look at that baby. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. The venerable flathead six. Yes. <laughs> wow, that's, that is, again, done really nicely. Looks bone stock. So this is a 1952 Nash Airflight Greenbrier wagon. Yes. A green Greenbrier. Yep. I love this. Along <laughs> with the Spirit of America and a, and a Helms Bakery. You brought some good stuff, Bob. Thank, Thank you, man. You. Thank you. Thanks, Dennis. <laughs> Well, Mike, this is a big mass of metal, 
right yes, here. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's a big, it sure is. This is a big, massive metal. This is a 52 Buick Roadmaster convertible. Yes, it is. I think this is a grand era for Buick. I just yeah. love these guys. That huge, toothy grill, the bomber sight uh, hood ornament. I, I've always loved these. My dad yeah. was a Buick guy. Yeah. One of my earliest memories was he had a, 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 I think it was a 54 Special. They're just wonderful cars, yep. you know? They're so solid. And they're Buicks. Yes. You know, there's just something yes. about a Buick. I think the, the wires really add to it. Yep. I didn't know they did that in no, 52. No, actually, it, this is an afterthought for me. And the uh, four Ventiports, it yep. must be a Roadmaster. Yep, yep. <laughs> now, is this chrome or is this stainless steel? All this, this is all chrome. It is, hey? Roadmaster, yep. Oh my gosh, have you re-chromed the whole thing? Yep. I wasn't sure this was like the original interior pattern. It is, it is. It this is, is. This this is, is, is the like. original 52 Roadmaster convertible pattern and this is obviously all redone and this is leather the other thing that's caught my eye because that's you know very red interior but your dash and your your door trim and stuff is kind of a maroon mm -hmm. and that was the way that, that was that was it and that horn button is yeah. killer I, yeah. I love that roadmaster Dynaflow. Dynaflow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed there's no ignition key because this was one of the floor start right. models, right? It's so you, you switch, you turn the switch on. Right, and you start it by pressing the accelerator. Leg room front, leg yep. room back. I found these interesting because this reminds me actually of a 54 Skylark. Do these light up? Is no, that, no. Okay, they're just, are they, yep. no, is, it, is it chrome? Oh, it's chrome. Yeah, I it's thought it was glass. Chrome. And then she wasn't long enough. Let's put a <laughs> Continental kit on it. 15 <laughs> inches of Continental kit. Now, was that a factory option or was that an aftermarket this option? This is an aftermarket uh -huh. option, which really I feel that dressed up the car oh, and man. gives it a real classy look. And it's just huge. Yeah, it now, is. <laughs> to haul this around, you need an equally huge engine. Let's go look and see what you got. Okay. And this is a great, the pian the grand piano hood. <laughs> she opens. Uh, Full either size. side, right? Yes, so yes, so it you does. can you can work on it either way. You close it down and open it. But I always love this. Straight eight, fireball, dyna flash eight. Yep. That's the block color. Yes. The, that's absolutely. what you look yep. like. Yeah. Yep. This engine looks totally different one side to the other. This is sort of the show side. Yes, this you, is because it has the It's got the advertisement. Right. right, right. <laughs> Valve in head. Right. Oh, this thing's great, man. A 1952 Buick. Roadmaster Convertible. Yes, it is. From Montana? From Montana, <laughs> yes it is. Unbelievable. <laughs> Thanks for bringing it Thank up, Thank you, man. Dennis. Nice to meet you. What a car. So, Greg, we're out rolling around Flathead Lake on the poker run. I, I, I see this 356. I can't resist. I, I flag you down at one of the stops, and, uh, and lo and behold, this is a really cool car and a really cool story. This has been in the family since new. Is that true? Yes, my dad took a European delivery of it in 1965. So he went there? He went there. He actually purchased it through a broker in the States, flew to Germany to pick the car up, and then shipped it back to the States. In 65? In 1965. I mean, that's... that's not a lot of people were doing that back then. You've got the Nerf bars on front. It came with an actual bumper, right? Correct. Right? Yeah, the original were bumpers. With the Nerf bars on and the bumpers gone, you can really see some Carmen Ghia here, can't you? Oh, absolutely. I think the, I mean, the, the Carmen Ghia style developed from the 356. Yeah, I, I had never noticed that before. And these are the original headlight lights? Correct. Because that's surprisingly modern, really. You see that on the minis now, something that yeah. looks an awful lot like that. Well, I guess I guess Porsche was it was a uh, ahead, ahead, ahead of his, of his time. time. There you go. <laughs> so this is what was called the bathtub body, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. it's been popularly called that. And and it, where was that in the lineage? Well, in 1950 they did the first Porsches, and that was the first of the 356. Okay. Okay. Over the years, they became the 356, the A, the B, and the C models. Right, and this right. happens to be a 356 SC, which is the last of the lineage. Oh, okay. When I looked in it, I mean, I felt like I was looking back in time. And that's an amazingly austere dash. This was a little bit more deluxe because it had the padded top dash and yeah. a handle over here next to the glove box so the passenger had something to hang on to. <laughs> Goodness knows it came in handy. And was there actually a back seat? Yes, those two, it actually is a split back seat. And I remember as a child actually riding in the back. There. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, you basically grew up with this car, didn't you? Correct. It? Wow, that's amazing. And it looks great rolling around here on these, on these roads. It just yeah. looks awesome. What's the power plant? Can we look at uh, what's under, under the hood, boot, whatever this is? <laughs> sure, hold All on. Right, let's do that. Wow, you know, that looks surprising like, like a Volkswagen engine. Well, a Porsche did uh, design the Volkswagen originally. <laughs> well, mm, so there, there's a reason for that, huh? So it's a flat four, just right. like the Volkswagen, 1600 cc's, has dual Solex carburetors on it, whereas there were Zeniths on the C model, which was the slightly lower horsepower one. This is just, I mean, it's, it's a classic look, so distinctive, 1965, 356 SC, right? Correct. Rolling around Flathead Lake, That's Montana. It. I've died and gone to heaven. <laughs> oh man, what a show. 
Big Fork, Montana, Flathead Lake. You know, there's a reason they call this God's country. Check this one out.